axe against flesh and axe against wood. A weapon might not do what a tool certainly could. So we raise up our axes and examine them now because though named the same, they're different somehow. Hey friends, Lauren back with you and uh, I'm holding a bundle of chopsticks. What does a bundle of chopsticks have to do with talking about axes? Well, allow me to explain. So a couple weeks ago, uh, Matt Easton did a really good video about why a uh, tool axe and a fighting axe are different. Um, but he didn't show any tool axes, and I want to get into a little bit more the biology of it. Um, why is this axe good against a tree, and why is this one here, the fighting axe, not so good against a tree? And uh, this bundle is going to help us in a second. Also, because when you order takeaway and you have your own chopsticks at home, and uh, you bring stuff home and you go to eat it and you prefer to use your nice chopsticks that you paid money for instead of the wooden ones that they come with that are, you know, maybe splintery or who knows what. And they still send them to you even though you ask them not to. Well, you end up with lots. It doesn't become a prop because we don't like to throw things away, right? We reuse. But we'll talk about that in a second. So anyway, today I want to kind of add to the good stuff that Matt was talking about in his video from a couple weeks ago and maybe I'll remember to put the link to that one in the video because he has some really nice fighting axe to look at. But uh, fighting axe, tool axe. And really let's get down to it. Let's look at the difference. Now okay this is a very old tool axe so it needs to be fixed. Ooh it sounds really nice though. Yeah really rings. But we can see the difference. The fighting axe here very thin broader edge, this is a hand axe, here, chopping axe, and they are about the same length, let me move back a little bit just so you see, so they're not too different, so even though I would use this with two hands for splitting wood, um, this one is for one hand, but we can see that difference in shape, there's a lot more mass on our wood chopping axe than there is on our fighting axe, so the fighting axe comes in fairly narrow, then comes down to a point. We'll explain a little bit more about fighting axes in a second. We also have the big axe in the back here. You can see that this one is more of a wedge shape. Look at that wedge. So what does that then have to do with the chopsticks? Well, we're simulating what a tree actually is like, you know, any kind of wood. And if you remember back from biology, plant material are generally rectangular kind of cells all stacked up and we know that the grain of wood goes in a certain direction and if you're splitting you're cutting into it now if you have a tool axe you have a wedge so we grab this this wedge is going to help push and split so that energy doesn't get resisted it's helping to split this apart okay so it's got to be a wedge shape and that's what's going to help if we are hammering against the side we are cutting into it, and uh, I'm cutting into that, but we're not doing this even with the tool axe directly. We are splintering off chunks along the grain in different directions. And so when you cut a tree down, you're actually, with an axe like this, you're cutting like this in two different directions, kind of chipping out the material and then you switch to the other side and eventually it falls. And if you know what you're doing, you can make it do go in a certain direction. And you'll see the internet has lovely videos of people who have no idea what they're doing and the tree does not go in the right direction. It goes exactly where they don't want it to go. I feel bad for them. I don't laugh at those videos because, uh, oh my goodness, they dropped a tree on his car. Uh, don't do that. Sometimes I wonder though, are videos really staged? Are they, you know, was that car on its way out? They parked there and cut the tree on purpose and make a viral video. Trust nothing, people. Trust nothing. Okay? All these spectacular things you see, don't trust them. But anyway, so if this bundle represents wood fiber going in a certain direction. This axe has to be there because it needs to take a lot of abuse. We also remember in physics that for every action, there's an opposite and equal reaction. So I may swing the axe at the tree, that energy impacts, but energy also comes back. So we're getting pressure on the axe head and having this thick wedge is going to keep this straight. It's going to help to keep this functioning. This axe head is really tough to bend. Fighting axe, on the other hand, if you're hacking. Now I can scrape down against the wood if this were a sharp axe. 
I can probably scrape around um, stuff to make kindling. I can split little things, little bits of wood, twigs, deadfall, stuff like that. So I could use this as a bit of a tool. So let's not say that a fighting axe isn't a tool, but I'm not gonna be able to chop down even a small tree with this without damaging the axe because the design is meant for people. <laughs> let's face it, it's meant for hacking up flesh. And the fleshiness, we are, to use a fun term, we are squidgy. The cells in animals are round things and they squidge and move. We are certainly much more mobile than a piece of wood. A piece of wood, solid. And even if we look at this, we can see the lines of the grain with the stain that I've put on this handle. You can really see the direction. So if we were to magnify it, we'd start to get structures like this. Okay? So we can see that. If I'm impacting against the tree and against all of these built up cells that don't want to move, that energy is also feeding back into the axe. That shock isn't being absorbed in a thick piece of metal. It's going to bend. That's something Matt talked about in his video. So these are meant for flash against softer targets in particular. And that's why we see them it's very popular uh, in antiquity and up into the early medieval period. Once we start getting heavier armor, the axe is going to change a bit in its design. Not as effective. We're putting back spikes. We're making pull axe, like the pull axe above my shoulder here. It's going to be very different. We're going to have to add a bit more heft to it. But if the axe is heavy, I can't wield this very well with one hand. It doesn't have recovery. And I can't swing. I have to make big swings. I can't swing, pull it back, and change direction easily enough. This is double the weight of this. Okay? And you can see, yeah, that's going to be a lot heavier. So we're going to have, like, I don't know, just over a kilogram. We're going to have two to three kilograms. It's going to definitely be different. So if I have one kilogram versus two kilograms, this is faster. So making a fighting axe, I want it to be light. I want it to be thin. I want it to hook and cut and slice into the flesh, through the fabrics, maybe even give a bit of damage to the body, some concussive force through armor if I come across it. And that's in an earlier medieval context, of course. Vikings and Anglo-Saxons and Franks and things like that. Okay? When I am cutting into a tree, I need all of that weight. I need that mass to resist. So that shock of impact, that energy being redirected back into the axe from the impact, because every action has an opposite and equal reaction, and a tree is so much bigger than the axe, hitting it like this, if I just continually did that with a thin axe, it's going to damage it, it's going to bend it, it's no longer effective, and if the axe is bent, if it's not coming to that direction with its mass properly being distributed behind it, it's not going to work. But even still, I'm going to cut up and down, and I'm really going to chip out the pieces of wood in that tree. So, a tool axe, not very good for fighting. You know, in the movies where a character might just pick up an axe out of a block of wood that takes their chopping axe and they fight with it. It's a big swing. I don't want to use this as a big swing, right? This, with one hand, for me, not very effective. I'm going to need two hands, but then look how short it is. If I'm going to fight at an axe with two hands, I'm going to use this one against the person because this is meant for fighting. And you can see just how thin it is. So if we look at the profile, very different. This is not going to do very well against a tree. This big two-handed axe here, we're going to get a lot of stress into this section. And of course, axes, this one is pretty simple. Uh, historically speaking, we might see that this is split and we've got a hardened steel edge placed inside, so it'll actually get thick and there'll be a bit of a wedge at the end of the axe, unlike the wood splitting axe, which always comes down to this thin point and is meant to split the bundle like so, right? And so that's why you can power through wood once it's dry, <laughs> mind you, um, cutting down a tree which still has its water content still a lot tougher chipping all that out. Okay? So, fighting axe, meant for flesh, can be used for small things, small little things like, you know, starting a fire, breaking up just a little bit of kindling, but it's not going to be strong to withstand even chopping down a small tree. 
you are going to damage your axe. It's not going to be as strong. And we think in medieval context, I mean, if this is made out of a modern steel, it's going to be a lot tougher than something that they may have had five, six hundred years ago. Right? So, minor tool at most, big tool at best, not so good at fighting because it is not so fluid with its movements. You take a strike, you miss, you're in trouble. If you don't hit the first time, not so good. But, excellent tool, makes a good hammer as well. Not such a good hammer, meant for people. So that's just something that I wanted to add. I saw that video from Matt Easton and figured, oh yeah, let's talk a little bit more about the design of that. He's got lots of great fighting axes, but I wanted to show, you know, just a hatchet for splitting wood, talk a little bit about the design of trees, and you know, it's just a little bit of a um, throw in some biology and some science into the mix, just so that when you're thinking about these things, especially if you're writing a story or playing a game, it can help you really define what works. Maybe a character does use a fighting weapon as a tool and ruins it. Maybe that's a good plot point because now they don't have a proper weapon for fighting and they get ambushed. I don't know. Little things like that. I like to explore that. Anyway, thanks for listening to me prattle on about different types of axes and why they're different and why certain ones are not good for the job of other things. Do remember, subscribe, like, and of course, comment, because your comments really do help shape the content of the channel. And uh, until next time, do remember, friends, take care, stay safe, wear masks, we're still in troublesome times, okay? Pace yourself, go easy, and um, yes, keep on swinging, but as you swing, remember to look out for you, because you can't look after anyone else if you don't look after yourself first. Take care.